Welcome. This is the first of two webinars the Alda Center and the Gold Foundation are producing together. It's going to be part discussion and it's going to be part um, experience. So if you don't have a pen or uh, something with which you can write with um, right near, can you just grab something real quick before we go any further? Um, we're going to be able to hear from you in the chat function and also um, through the Q&A and we'll be uh, giving you some polling as well. So we hope that we can connect in that way throughout this uh, webinar. Our two organizations have come together today because we really wanted to address the challenges that we're all facing in healthcare, uh, especially given the pandemic. And how can we all communicate with each other, with our team members, with our colleagues, and support each other? This emphasis and the collaboration between the Alda Center and the Gold Foundation to create this webinar is captured in this poem you'll see here. And we invite you to view it further on both of our, web, our websites, along with hearing it read aloud by the author, Frankie Aberland of the Good Listening Project. While you're there, please do look around and explore all of our helpful resources. Uh, I'm Dr. Elizabeth Cleek, and my background is in psychology. I'm the Chief Operating Officer at the Gold Foundation. Uh, we wanted to share something personal about ourselves, and so I will just note that if I am not very careful with the mute button, you may hear my dog barking in the background. Hello, I'm Pia Pine Miller, and I have a background in both public health and business. I am the Senior Director for Strategy and Business Development at the Gold Foundation. A personal fact, I love writing pieces about restaurants for online foodie groups and blogs. The Gold Foundation's vision is that healthcare will be dramatically improved by placing human interests, values, and dignity at the core of teaching and practice. Great to see everyone today. And I'm Shishmita Bodhi. I'm the Chief Medical Program Advisor for the Alan Alda Center for Communicating Science, among other hats. And the one uh, fun fact I wanted to share with all of you today is, I got a little poison ivy over the weekend while I was oh, outdoors. No. Yeah. <laughs> Tis the season for that. Uh, I'm Elizabeth uh, Boisha, otherwise known as Ebeth, so I'll be using my nickname to distinguish me from the other Elizabeth on the panel today. I am an assistant professor of practice with the Allen Alda Center for Communicating Science, and I'm also um, the improv specialist on the curriculum design team for our Alda Medical Program. My fun fact is I prefer things secondhand to new. I always look for used things first and I love that when I find it. Uh, at the Alda Center, our mission is to empower scientists and health professionals to communicate complex ideas in clear, vivid, and engaging ways using empathy, strategy, and uh, training in listening and connection. So there's a little bit about us, and we're going to give you a chance to tell us uh, a little bit about you. And first, I'm going to ask you to get that piece of paper out. Um, and that thing to write with. And um, I just would like you to do an exploratory exercise along with us. This will be a minute long and you're going to write on your piece of paper the phrase, I am, I am, I am. And just write it over and over and over again as many times as you can. And write down whatever bubbles up for you, whatever comes to mind. Uh, to model this a little for you, it might sound something like, I might write, um, I am Elizabeth, I am Ebeth, I am a mother, I am a theater artist, I am a singer, I am someone who enjoys belting show tunes, I am left-handed, I am 
uh, over caffeinated, I am, I am, right, on and on, whatever, there's no wrong answer to this at all. Um, we're just curious to see what can happen if you just open up yourself to brainstorm for one minute the many who's that you are with I am. Let me get my timer started here and your minute starts now. Fifteen more seconds. Don't stop writing. Right. Thank you. That is a minute. All right, so finish up that final thought. Wonderful. Thanks, Eva. So let's take a close look at the trends and how all of you responded. To do this, we invite you to take a quick anonymous poll. All right, you should see that poll pop up there. Yeah. So which of the following did you include in each of your one minute examples exploring the many whose you are? Perhaps they are phrases that define you in relationships an aspect of yourself you're proud of, an aspect of yourself you're not so proud of, an identity that you chose, perhaps an identity that you did not choose, or were your words emotions? All right, thank you all. Looks like we got a lot of people. This is terrific. Pulling in. We'll give it about another 10 seconds. It's interesting, at very first, there were certain things that were 100%, but now it looks like, um, you know, these different buckets are um, not completely full. And these are not meant to be all of the buckets of facets of ourselves. These are particular ones that we were interested in teasing out. Mm. All right, welcome. Some people are still logging on. So I'm gonna close this poll. We'll share the results. Interesting. Great. Thanks, Eva. This looks fantastic. So top result was? The top 83 result. percent of the people who answered the poll <laughs> shared something that they were proud of. Yes. Great. <laughs> <laughs> it is great, isn't it? I'm trying to think, you know, what things am I proud of that I wrote down? Um, and maybe things that I shared that I'm maybe not so proud of maybe being grumpy in the morning, something like that. I'm wondering if people would feel comfortable sharing some things in the chat anonymously, some examples of things in any of these categories or even outside of these categories. Maybe an, you know, an aspect again that you're proud of, maybe Phrases that define you in relationships, mother, wife, friend, cousin. And the chat is going to everyone, so we can see everybody's answers. Thank you so much. Um, folks outside smiling in the sunshine, alone, microbiologist and auntie. So some things, thank you so much, tired, chilly sister this is so interesting thank you so much for sharing and thinking about all of these things putting them into maybe some emotional states here now we're seeing sad scared 
little nervous about being back at work, of course, in the pandemic. That's why we're all here, maybe, all of us in healthcare. Curious researcher. Maybe some people wrote down things uh, related to their gender or their ethnicity. Yep, I'm seeing some of that. I'm woman, yes. I'm white. Yes, and what's so interesting about this is I think you can do this exercise every day and your daily one minute of many who's shifts around, right? Uh, depending on what's going on in the world around us, depending on what's going on in your life, uh, whether it be your professional life or otherwise. And, it, it, you know, it's fascinating to see these, you know, some of these are, are personality qualities, you know, uh, just things that tend to be pretty constant and then other things are so short-lived. Right. You're tired now, but <laughs> after you rest, you will not be, you know, then you would be well-rested and that would change. And um, our identities are so layered in that way between things that, that all the way from that did not choose to, um, you know, to things that, that will change minute to minute. Like right now, am I, am I, am I verbose? Am I talking too much? <laughs> I'm thinking to myself. Oh, these are great. Yeah, very and so we're going to grab these from the chat. I have someone at the Alda Center um, who's helping with the webinar, and I'll be able to give that back to us at the, begin at the end of this webinar as a word cloud. So it won't be attached to any of your names anymore, but we'll see where there's some commonalities with that as well. Absolutely. And I just saw a lifelong learner come up, a pianist, photographer. Um, so many different roles that uh, we all play. And as we take on these different roles, we do use different tools and resources. Um, I see them still coming through, thank you. Um, Pia, I know this is true for you. I love attending white coat ceremonies. So white coat ceremonies were a tradition started by the Gold Foundation to reinforce the human connection in healthcare. And I love them because I love watching medical and nursing students as they lean in with eagerness and enthusiasm about their work ahead. Um, you can see it clearly uh, in this picture. Um, excited to help people heal. Um, and when I think about the white coat, you know, it's many things, right? It can be a symbol. Uh, it may provide an armor. Um, it, it could be a reminder. And the oath that students take during that ceremony is a commitment to the kind of care they want to be known for. Um, and so if you think about the many who's that you are, again, going back to a uh, pianist, you can't be a pianist without the piano, uh, or maybe you can, <laughs> um, thinking about the different tools that you use uh, as, you, as you navigate these roles. Yeah, and we're all many things, depending on the context we're in. We bring certain pieces of ourselves forward, maybe put other ones back. Of course, when you're out and about, you know, in the community, chatting with people, are you wearing your healthcare professional hat or are you wearing some other hat? And what choices are you making when you're connecting with people? Usually we all are looking for some common ground. It's a really deep human need to connect with others. And, and we know that from neuroscience, thinking back to you know, the mother-baby connection, that's one of the most fundamental ones we know about. And we really like to look for common ground because it creates a we rather than a me and a you. And thinking about some of these identities that all of you have shared with us today, some of these things are things you took on by choice. We all entered healthcare, that was a choice. Some things we did not enter by choice. Uh, family relationships, uh, those kinds of things. We, I'm sure we can all think of some folks that we really are glad to be with in our family and maybe some folks we're not so glad to be with in our families. And some maybe of our own idiosyncrasies and we have different levels of patience, we have different levels of interest in different types of things. Absolutely. And as you were just saying, Shishmita, being part of the healthcare community is a choice. It's something that everyone on the webinar chose. 
Um, but that common ground, uh, all the rules of healthcare, our everyday interactions, uh, everything has been uh, just a bit upended right now. Yeah. And speaking of common ground, Shishmita, that's something that you have in common with many folks um, on this call. Yeah. Yeah. So, Shishmita, as a doctor, what have you been hearing? Well, hearing a lot of different things. Certainly, um, one of the things that's so important in this pandemic situation is communication. Um, and of course, communication people are feeling anxious um, and they may not express that to the public, but they may express that to their coworkers, to their family members. They're feeling anxious when they make that choice to come into work. Uh, every day we entered the profession to heal. Certainly some folks have been asked to serve in roles that maybe they were not doing before. So that, so-called redeployment yeah. um, that has been happening in many healthcare organizations um, in order to take care of all of the patients that are coming in. I'm wondering, you know, by a show of hands. Yeah, um, could you all please let us know what you've also all heard, if you've heard similar things to Susmita? And please feel free to write what you've been hearing in the chat box. Yeah, maybe you're hearing things not just about anxiety, but also pride um, that you came into this profession and you're really proud of what you're able to do. Perhaps feeling overwhelmed, hearing a lot of that as well. And of course it varies moment to moment. We're getting some stuff in the chat now, concern for the welfare of employees, of course, under pressure, perhaps. Scared. Yeah, absolutely. Hmm. Worried, isolated, afraid to connect, frustrated, all of these types of things. Thank you all so much for sharing. In need of human contact, hugs, closeness, different perspectives for those of you who are joined us today who are not in healthcare, thank you. Mental health issues, fear about losing family members, failing as a professional and a mother. Please. Yeah, and you know, so I'm just wondering for, for our friends from the Gold Foundation, you know, what are you all hearing about how are we keeping humanism in healthcare these days? Yeah, I was just gonna go back even to one of the things that we were just seeing come through, some of the things people people missing hugs, people missing um, you know, the, the common the ways that they used to take for granted um, and engage uh, and really struggling with that. Um, I was just thinking for myself, I know I use my smile as a means to engage, right? And, and now the smile is covered by a mask. Um, and so one of the things we're really hearing is that we need to find meaning and craft new ways for interaction. Um, but I will say that what, uh, again, what we are hearing loud and clear is that humanism is a core, core part of the healthcare response to COVID-19. And, and never has it been more important. Um, finding ways to be present with patients and team members, uh, family members who may not be able to be with their loved ones uh, during a very scary moment in time. Um, we are really seeing that humanism shine through uh, every day. Yeah. Thanks, Elizabeth. As someone in healthcare, with all the many who's you are and roles you embody, pulling you in so many different directions, the importance of actively inoculating yourself at the beginning of your career with humanism was or will be important and crucial in protecting you. And each of you, no matter where you are in your career, a student, starting in practice, 
an educator, 60 years in practice, or the person you have in front of you, the patient you're delivering care to, their family members, with your teachers and mentors, educating others, or with colleagues and the entire care team, you will need in an ongoing way to seek out programs and tools to enhance your journey. And these will be booster shots, so to speak, to that initial inoculation, and they will be essential in keeping human interests, values, and dignity at the core of healthcare. We hope that you have had a few minutes to reflect on the many facets of yourself and strengths that you have within you. I'm getting our word cloud together. Awesome. Yeah. Good. All right, here's the big reveal. All right. Let's see if I can check it out. Some of them ended up small. If they, you know, if only if one or two people said it, it's smaller, but if uh, many people said it, it's, it's larger. I see some relationships popping right out. Wait, this is beautiful. It is beautiful. Yeah. yeah, thank you all. Yeah. For that. Yeah, that's wonderful. This is, it's really, truly beautiful. And, and thank and you. Beth. Oh, yeah, I was just going to say next week, I can show this again at our yeah. second installment. So we can call back to the many who's we evoke today. Absolutely. And that is on June 3rd, we will have our second webinar. And we'll be happy to share with you more about both of our organizations, how we look at the communication strategies, and how that can influence the culture along the continuum of healthcare. And if you have any questions or are interested in finding out more, including how these can be implemented at your organization, please reach out to us. That's great. And I'm going to launch an exit poll um, right now. So if you, um, before you sign off, if you could go ahead and just give us some quick feedback on the webinar, we'd really appreciate that. Um, we'll also be following up with a very brief um, emailed evaluation that should arrive to you tomorrow. And we'd really appreciate um, finding out a little bit more about who you are and uh, what you thought about the webinar this week. And um, we hope you come back for uh, next week's installment as well. Yeah, very much so. And we are in this together. Thank you for everything you do. And we will stick around for a few minutes if there are any questions. Otherwise, thank you so much for joining us and thank you for taking the poll. Thank you, everyone. I'm seeing a lot of thank yous here. Thank you. thank you. I know. That's great. Are there, there's one question from Gwen. Are there workshops oriented toward communications educators? Um, we don't have anything on the Alda Center side for um, communications educators. Um, uh, what was the question again, Ebeth? Can you repeat it? It was, it was about communications educators. Gotcha. Mm -hmm. I, didn't, I didn't speak for the Gold Foundation, but I just I, I know what we offer here. Um, oh, this is fascinating. Sander has written... Um, that how do you invite medical professionals to, to improv workshops? I'm a theater teacher in the Netherlands. And yeah, the idea of getting the buy-in from doctors that in fact, um, doing some improv is going to help them. In their <laughs> you you so, want me to take that one? I think first? that's made for you, <laughs> Shishmita. <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, and then I maybe someone can gold, from Gold can jump yeah, in too. Absolutely, but. yeah, sure. I completely understand what you're asking. And I think uh, certainly in our experience, it's really been that we know in organizational culture, you need that buy-in from the leadership. Um, so if you're able to engage your leadership and um, persuade them that it's valuable 
um, and worthwhile, then that really drives the change um, and the, the, the ability to offer this type of workshop or improv workshops to um, other folks. And, um, you know, one way to sort of get that buy-in or have that leadership get a taste is perhaps sharing something like this with them. Um, um, that, you know, certainly there's literature about uh, how improv does uh, impact communication skills. So, um, and I think we have some of those references at the Alda Center website somewhere um, in the Learning Center, I think. Um, if you're, in, you know, it depends on who your leader is and what kind of um, sort of argument is going to be persuasive to them. Yeah. Um, and I know I have really enjoyed, I will leave the improv uh, questions to the Alda Center, uh, because I think that's, that's your uh, <laughs> domain. Uh, and I have really enjoyed uh, working with the Alda team in developing this webinar. Um, uh, the, the Gold Foundation actually honored Alan Alda, um, I think a year ago, uh, maybe even more than that at this point, uh, two years ago, thank you, uh, for really uh, developing this this wonderful um, uh, skill set, capacity, uh, thinking about this and, and uh, helping to uh, really create this. So uh, we've, we've been thrilled to, to partner with the Alda Center. Um, in terms of Gold Foundation, we have a human insight webinar series that we have recently launched. Um, and we have a, a range of different topics um, that, that might be interesting. Uh, that we hope you'll find interesting to uh, uh, medical educators, nursing, um, healthcare physicians, the, the healthcare team uh, in, in general. So um, we, I urge you to, rec to check out our website and you will be able to find that. Um, Pia, do you want to share anything yeah. more? On the yeah, and we also have a communication tool called Tell Me More, which we're going to go into in the next webinar, which is a wonderful strategy to make a close connection um, around the relationship between uh, the, the, the practitioner themselves and their care team, as well as with the, the person they see, the patients in front of them, and also their family. So we, um, we really also invite you, even in between these two webinars, please reach out to the folks at the Alda Center and please reach out to us at the Gold Foundation. We're, help, we're very happy to connect you to any and all of our resources that might be of help to you. That's great. And we got one question in the q and I just checked it um, right now. So we'll answer that live, Alberta. I got ya. Um, and it's just, a, I think this may be a nice way to just bring it to a close. Um, Alberta is asking, you know, going back to the I am by myself helps in what way, right? So just let's drive home this little nugget that we uh, put together for, uh, for today, right? Um, I don't know if Shishmita, you were um, speaking of some of this in the webinar today, right? This idea of um, the power of choosing um, identities in particular, choosing the identity to, to be a healthcare provider, taking on that white coat as a symbol that makes great meaning that the Gold Foundation gave to that. Um, and that perhaps is uh, because of the pandemic um, taking over, right? That's, the, that's the, the first who that you are every day, you wake up and it's like, yeah, I have to go in. I have to, I have to um, help these folks. I, I have to do that at the expense of, you know, these relational things a lot of people shared, you know, I'm, uh, that they were parents or um, that they were concerned about, um, you know, spreading infection to, to loved ones and, and things like that. Um, so I think even though those circumstances are ones that are, are bringing that to the fore, you're still a complete person with all these other facets um, that exist within you. Um, and some of them come forward and come back and you can will them forward and, and back as you need, as the context dictates. And I think there's really powerful connection and being able to find a we um, between you and team members, whether you're defining team as the people you work with in your work setting, or if that's the team of a caregiver, a patient, and um, those who are working in the hospital to provide the care, um, we're all human beings here. And there may be um, 
unexpected opportunities for connection, um, to treat each other with grace, to treat ourselves with grace and um, openness. Forgiveness. Yeah. Forgiveness. Yeah. I don't know if anyone wants to add anything. Alberta, thanks for that that question. Yeah. Maybe I had a chance yeah. to reflect back what I heard. It, it really is that human connection. It's, it's what brought the Alda Center together with the Gold Foundation. And it's, it's also what has brought all of us here today. And we really hope you join us on that. The second part of this journey, you know, next week, we, we really hope you have all enjoyed this and, and thank you so much. Thank you all very much. Thank you. Take care. Hope thank to see you, you. next Take week. Take care, everyone.